Ah, and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We have a great show for you today. As always, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Takes by Fans and be a part of the conversation. And come watch live daily, noon Eastern at twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans or at our official website, TakesByFans.com. You go to the watch tab. And whenever we are live, we are live on the site. Folks, it is this simple. We are live right now, so we are live on the site. It's right here. We're live. We're live. There's proof. We are live. So, however you decide to watch, just make sure you're watching for all your daily sports content. Um, All right. Today is... What is today? Today is Sunday, y'all. Game day. Hour out from kickoff. Beautiful day. Beautiful Sunday out. It's cloudy. Nothing to do besides just stay in all day and embrace all these great football matchups. Maybe win a couple bucks also. I mean, hey, free, you know, free day off watching football, just being lazy, winning money. Folks, it is. This is why uh, football is America's number one pastime, truly. Doing nothing and winning money. That's what America's all about, folks. Just doing nothing and getting paid for it. So uh, hopefully we can all try and do that today. We've got our picks. We'll remind you of them in a second. Um, Today's Sunday. So we're just going to go our final thoughts on this week's matchups. Get them out there. Say what we think is going to happen. And prepare for a full long day of football. So we will um, kind of break down every game um, today. We'll review our picks. And yeah, that's it. Oh, and we have a little surprise today. Today. We are going to be w- watching some film today. We usually don't watch any film on Sunday, but we got to watch this court or this Cowboys quarterback, right? Starting in his first uh, full game, Ben DiNucci. No Andy Dalton. Uh, no Andy Dalton today. Cowboys are going third string quarterback, Ben DiNucci. We saw him for a little bit in their last game, literally like halfway through the third quarter. This man comes in because Andy Dalton got a concussion. Unfortunate. So they bring in Ben DiNucci. We got some college tape. We're going to try and break down. Is this man going to be good? Probably not. But, hey, we'll try to give him the the benefit of the doubt tonight. So we got a little film action today as well. So let's just jump right into it. What do we got today? Well, we, we, we have three stories. We got to quickly get out of the way before we start talking games. Here we go. First one, no players have tested positive today for COVID-19. So bing, bang, boom, baby. We are all good to go. Every single game is being played. No delays, no pushbacks. I mean, we might get like what happened in the World Series in halftime. Some guy randomly test positive for COVID and they have to bring him out of the game. That was real bizarre. So hopefully we don't get any of that today in football. I don't think we will. We're all looking good. No positive cases. We are ready to rock, y'all. You know, that's, I mean, we've had a great last three weeks. That's why we all just need to take a deep breath in and just relax when we see a COVID case. It's just like, all right, guys. All right. Yes, this is bad, but it could be a lot worse. And I don't think it's going to get worse. So, hey, I mean, this is three straight weeks where we don't have to worry about rescheduling a game and moving the NFL season back like four weeks. So we're all good here. Games are good to go. Tua's first game is going on without a hitch, y'all. Perfect. All righty, now let's talk about the Saints a little bit. No Emmanuel Sanders. Once again, he's still trying to get over his COVID case. So he's not playing. Not great. Michael Thomas is also not playing. Once again, not great. We saw what the Saints were able to do last week um, without Emmanuel Sanders and Michael Thomas, but... This week, they're facing a better Bears defense, so I may have to adjust my pick again on our 99% guarantees. We took Saints minus 4.5, but I thought Michael Thomas was going to play because he was practicing in Wednesday. So I think um, I'm, I'm going to do a little sw- sidetrack right here. I think the Saints trade Michael Thomas by the deadline on Tuesday. He should be playing this He should be playing this week. The injury is holding him back. I think that um, blow up in the locker room, that kind of argument him with Sean Payton in that locker room kind of altercation that we've kind of been hearing about. We haven't heard, I don't think we've seen or heard the full extent of that fight in the locker room that Michael Thomas was a part of, but I think he's going to be out the door. I think the Saints are going to try and move off of him. They're probably not playing him because they don't want to have him re aggravate that. Um, what what it's a it's a ba 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 a hamstring injury. So I he 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 practiced on Wednesday. He should have been good to go to play this week, but I think they're gonna trade him. That's why they're not playing him. Don't want to re injure that hamstring, so you know his trade value doesn't go down this season. I think he's out the door. I think that fight really just sealed his fate in this in New Orleans. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, but. 
Uh, man, I mean, without these two wide receivers, yeah, they kind of made it work last week, but they were at home, and uh, they were coming off a bye, oh, and they were facing the Panthers, so really everything just went right for the Saints team that they didn't need one uh, at least one of their two top wide receivers. So I think the Bears defense is going to shut the Saints team down offensively, I think, because without Emmanuel Sanders or Michael Thomas for a second straight game, I don't think the Saints can kind of duplicate the offense last week against a better defense this this week and also on the road. Not the not the greatest circumstances. I'm still going to believe in the Saints minus four and a half, but I am going to give another pick today. Just because, man, it's tough. So, Emmanuel Sanders out, unfortunately. And then we've got some uh, trade deadline here. Real quick, Washington is open to dealing Dwayne Haskins for the right price. R what, what are they looking for? Like a tomato sandwich? I don't I don't even know. That's the right price for Dwayne Haskins. That's the right price that Washington is treating that Dwayne Haskins is worth a, a tomato sandwich. The man, they've, they've ruined him. He's, he's spoiled goods. He's going to probably be out of Washington. They're looking to trade him. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, Dwayne Haskins can go to a team and maybe just learn for two or three years and try to get back on track in his development. But, yeah, uh, I mean, Dwayne Haskins, nobody's going to want him. And they're probably just asking, you know, a, a an eighth-round pick in, you know, four years down the road <laughs> draft, which is absolutely nothing because that does not exist. Um, and then it says the Saints are not open to dealing Michael Thomas. I think that's a lie, folks. I think they are open to dealing him. Um, maybe just try to do it later in the week, next week, right before the deadline to try and get the best value. Uh, you know, a surprise. Hang on. We actually are. Now teams are like, hang on. All right. We've got two hours. We're making the deal. So I think this is all a part of the Saints plan. They do want to deal Michael Thomas. They want him out of New Orleans because he is kind of being toxic to this locker room. And I think they want him out. So we'll keep an eye on this trade deadline is Tuesday so that's going to be a great show cannot wait <clears throat> Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all, uh, that's all the news today. No, no, the saints are hit the hardest without, uh, Michael Thomas and, um, uh, Emmanuel Sanders. So we'll see how the saints do. Um, but with that being said, let's refresh these lines and let's go through these games. Just our final thoughts of what we think is going to happen this week. Um, real quickly, let's go to our website, you know, takes by fans. We already got our, oh yeah, we, we're good. Come on. You might run into that, you know, <laughs> that, uh, oh, the site didn't load for, you know, maybe, maybe every other, other, other time, you know, one in five times, not even one in five, really. I really don't even see that error <laughs> unless we're live and then it, you know, makes my heart stop. <laughs> uh, but here we go. This is what we're rocking with this week, folks. Our locks, Packers minus six and a half, Steelers plus four, and Bucks minus 12. You have 48 or 42 minutes left. 52 minutes left to get some uh, late action in on this games. Packers minus six and a half, absolutely fantastic. Steelers plus four, Bucks minus twelve. That's a three-team parlay. You put five hundred bucks, you're gonna win thirty-four hundred bucks, folks. And then in our ninety-nine percent guarantees, we're still rocking with Dolphins plus three and a half. Saints minus four and a half. I'm not too confident with. I am going to give a makeup pick right now, right after this. And Colts minus three. So instead of Saints minus four, let's see what we got here. Uh, my backup of the backup because I already had to switch out that Buffalo game. So now I'm going eight picks deep this week, folks. I'm going eight picks deep. Um, we are going to do, I like the Broncos plus three. And we'll start here when we talk about the games. Um, I, I heard an excellent point this week, an excellent point. I'm not going to name the source, but he brought up one of the most important points that I don't know has that has been brought up. Chargers, who's their quarterback? Rookie. Rookie, Justin Herbert, right? Where is he going? Mile High Stadium. Not great. He may not be ready for that kind of climate, that um, that uh, not great air. You know, they're they're very high above sea level in Denver, so it is harder to breathe. Yeah, um, if you want to simulate that, you have to have like a training mask, and I've worn one, and they literally make you want to die. You are sucking in oxygen, but there's not a lot of oxygen to suck up there in Denver. So Justin Herbert, this may affect him a a little bit here um, coming from you know the Chargers and um, you know where he went to college he wasn't in Denver so this is going to be a huge surprise to him his first trip here to Denver um, division game so Broncos getting plus three absolutely love it their defense has been absolutely solid so I don't think that they're going to have any 
they're not going to have too much trouble dealing with Justin Herbert. I mean, if this Broncos team gets uh, pressure early on Justin Herbert, now he's sucking win even harder. Um, in you know, in this, I'm telling you, this is the real deal. That's why Denver wins kind of early in September. Those first couple games where teams aren't really kind of fully conditioned and fully prepared for an NFL game, they go up to mile high and they are sucking in oxygen, folks, and they just cannot be effective if they're just tired and you know they're not well oxygenated. So, love the Broncos here, plus three. I think I'm going to feel better um, Broncos plus three than Saints minus four. I will sub that out. Um, we already have Saints minus four. That is locked in. I can't do anything about that. But I still do kind of like it because I don't trust Nick Foles of putting up any points. And I think this is a great substitute if you haven't done anything yet and are looking to do something right now. You know, last second, I want this. I do like Broncos plus three, folks. Justin Herbert, rookie quarterback, going up into Denver. It's not going to be great for him. His first meeting there, I think he's going to be overwhelmed by it all. And we'll see if Denver's uh, defense can really capitalize. And Drew Locke, I mean, he's got an arm too. I mean, this is this really should just be a quarterback duel. Just got arms and gunslingers everywhere. Justin Herbert, we already know he has the big arm. And we've looked at Drew Locke in the offseason. We really like this man arm. So they both got cannons for arms. And we'll see uh, who uh, outshines or out throws the other one in today's game but I really do like Denver plus three here folks Alrighty, let's uh, start at the top here. Vikings and Green Bay. Green Bay, the the line is coming down a little bit because Aaron Jones, their running back, is not playing. So he's you know worth a, a point to Vegas. Vegas says, hey, the running game for the Packers is about a point. So that's kind of huge value. You don't see one player besides a quarterback making a huge change in the lines, but they they value Aaron Jones as at a solid point now. I'm not too worried about that. I'm still rocking with Green Bay minus six and a half. You you know, if you wait till Sunday, you got some even better value because even though Aaron Jones is not playing, I still think the Packers are going to perform very well. Aaron Rodgers, you know, he doesn't need the running game to open up his passing. He can just do it with his arm and his accuracy and his deep throws. So Aaron Rodgers, he's not going to miss Aaron Jones too much in this game, exactly, um, um, even with... Uh, or, I mean, they got Devontae Adams back last week, so he's still good to go this week as well. And this Vikings team, folks, they are not good. Yes, they're coming off the bye, but this defense of the Vikings is truly not great, folks. And Kirk Cousins, we cannot trust him. He's tried and tried and tried, but he's throwing interceptions. And that is a little uncharacteristic of him. He didn't throw a lot last season. He was playing very well last season, but that's what happens when you have two great wide receivers on your team. You can kind of inflate your stats a little bit, just throwing to those great receivers that will catch anything that you throw to them. They had Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs goes out, and now you're rocking with Adam Thielen as just your lone kind of number one option, and Kirk Cousins is struggling mightily. Vikings have, what, one win? And, I mean, their first meeting against Green Bay, they got absolutely shut out, folks. So, Packers minus five and a half they are absolutely going to blow it up even without Aaron Jones folks it's not going to hurt them too much in my opinion Vikings getting rid of their best defensive piece in Gonkwe this week as well so folks are getting worse defensively um Let's get some good value here. I mean, you could you could theoretically buy this one up to like Packers minus 13 and a half. I still think that's pretty good. You get plus 260 on that value as well. You hook at that plus four or that minus 14. Um, Aaron Rodgers wins by two touchdowns. Bingo, bango. You got the win there. So I definitely like, you know, Packers minus 13. I think that is still a solid bet there. Buy it up even a little bit more. Aaron Rodgers at home after a two-game road trip. He's going to be looking up to put up a MVP caliber case today, folks. I'm really I'm really feeling that. So Aaron Rodgers, he's going to go big against this Vikings defense. Nobody, Who's going to stop Aaron Rodgers on this Vikings defense, folks? Nobody. Nobody can do this. Let me just let me do this let me do this let me go over their defense and who's going to be able to stop Aaron Rodgers let me just go through it all they have nobody right here what do we got defensively what do we got what do we got <clears throat> nobody good on the line they just got rid of um, maybe Eric Kendricks he's okay okay middle linebacker 
Um, but yeah, look at these safeties. Nobody good. Anthony Harris, maybe, but no, no, nobody on this defense of Minnesota is going to do anything. These are literally nobodies. Nobody's on this defense. Truly. They have one win because of this defense, folks. They're one in five. They're trash. They cannot put up points. And when they do, they do it in the fourth quarter when the game's already over, folks. That's why you you have to take an entire um the film, the stats, and the scoring drives, you have to take them all together. You can't just look at the scores because in the first meeting, Green Bay, uh, you know, they gave up 24 points in the fourth quarter because the game was already over. So you can't just fall in love, you know, by just looking at scores. You have to take it all into account. And this Packers team is the real deal, folks. They are fat. They are fantastic. Um, they overcame that Bucks kind of debacle last week. And uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to do it again this week, folks. If they stopped kind of that high-powered offense of Houston last week, the Vikings are nowhere near the firepower of Houston. They're not going to be able to do anything, folks. I, I really think it's going to be a blowout, truly. Packers win by 21 points. I, w I would do that. All right, Steelers and Ravens probably going to be the best game of the week. I cannot wait. Um, this is going to be the game on my second screen to a uh, time. Obviously going to be on the main screen, and this one's going to be on the second one because these are two of the top teams in the league going at it. Baltimore, they're good, but they have to beat the good teams to show that they deserve to be highly ranked in our power rankings. We have them We have them sitting at number nine right now because their one matchup against the Chiefs, they didn't look good in it, folks. They really did not. So I expect the Steelers defense to kind of um, have Lamar Jackson struggling a little bit. Um, they're either going to take away the run or they're going to take away the pass. I hope they take away the run, the Steelers defense, because as, uh, Lamar Jackson, he hasn't really thrown for over 200 yards in too many games this season. Not great. Not great. Gotta, gotta throw for at least 200 yards. I mean, that's the bare minimum here, folks. In an NFL game, you know, I don't even care if it's like a run-heavy offense. If the quarterback is not putting up at least 200 yards, you're not going to win the game. So, Ravens, they can do it because Lamar Jackson is still making up those yards um, on the ground. So, he does still average about like 250 in total with the run and pass. But if the Steelers take away the ground game, he's only passing for 170. I don't think the Ravens can win it. So Big Ben, he's going to be a little bit more more cautious than he's already been. I mean, this man has truly been dinking and dunking his way down the field. Nothing really deep, even though he does have the receivers for the deep ball. And we all know Big Ben has the arm for the deep ball. Nobody's questioning that. But Big Ben wants to get the ball out of his hands very quickly, so he's not getting hit. This Ravens team does have a pretty good defense. But with Big Ben dinking and dunking, if the pass rush, pass, pass rush of Baltimore does get there, Steelers Big Ben is just going to dump it off to James Conner and let that man work and that's just going to ease the pressure for the entire game so I'm really loving the Steelers here and I'm getting plus four absolutely magnificent here the Steelers if they don't win it they keep it close because that's what they do the defense is you know made to keep games close and Big Ben he can score at will whenever he wants because he's got the arm talent so if he needs to go 100 yards in you know a minute 35 seconds he has the ability to do that folks division game as well on top of all that give me the four give me the four give me the four folks I love it um yeah, Steelers plus four, man. I love it. Five hundred on that returns you four fifty-five, man. It's it's truly great. What a, what a bet. Steelers plus four. Steelers plus four and Packers minus six and a half. I think those are really the strongest bets of the weeks, folks. If you take that in just a two teamer, this is guaranteed money. Damn, this is guaranteed money. You put a grand on this, you're you're looking at thirty six hundred, folks. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Well done. Go go win thirty. Four hundred, whatever I just said, I <laughs> go win that. Um, all right, let's keep moving on. Titans and Bengals. Now this spread has just been creeping up more and more. I think on Thursday when we looked at it, it was Titans minus five and a half, and it's climbing all the way to Titans minus seven here, and that's a little interesting to me. This Titans team has just come off some tough games. I mean, these last three weeks, just in general for the Titans, you know, I do keep bringing up the COVID story because so many players on this team had it. They were the only team that had to kind of like kind of reschedule their game like a week, an entire week out. Out. So 
just mentally from that aspect. And then their their uh, schedules just started to really ramp up quickly. Bills, Steelers, uh, Texans. I mean, really good offense. We're really decent teams, above average teams in general. And the Titans really just got it going into hyperdrive mode these last couple weeks. So now they kind of come down a little bit in talent-wise facing the Bengals. So I think they may just try to just, oh my, just like kind of breathe a sigh of relief being like, all right, this is an this is an easier game. I get no game is easy in the league. I get that, folks. So they're you know Mike Vrabel, Ryan Tannehill's like, all right, whew, we made it out of that stretch, two and one, pretty good. We looked good against the Steelers too in that loss. So let's all kind of regroup here. We're gonna run it and run it and dink and dunk. I don't think the Titans are gonna put up a lot of points in this game. So I think I do like the Bengals plus seven because they've got they've proven they've got nothing to lose offensively, folks. If you look at Joe Burrow, this man is throwing like fifty passes every game they are working this man to the bone they're like hey we drafted you you know with our first round pick we're gonna get some good use out of you you're young you're healthy you're good to go you're out there kid good <laughs> good luck throw it 50 times hopefully you don't throw three interceptions hopefully you can keep those interceptions down because literally every play is gonna be a pass so um with that being said i think the Bengals um may get checked a little bit um i do like this titans defense the Bengals don't really have any great pieces offensively or defensively. Yes, I get Joe Burrow and A.J. Green, but their kind of connection has kind of been a little spotty this season. Bengals have been giving up a lot of points, but also scoring a lot of points in those games that they do give up a lot of points, really resulting in a shootout. I don't see it here. The seven's giving me a little discomfort. I think I like the Bengals plus seven. I think I would take the points in this in this situation just because I think the Titans are just going to be looking for a kind of a breather game. They don't have a bye anymore, folks. Their bye got used up week three, I think it was, their kind of COVID outbreak. So, this is an easy game for the Titans. I expect them to kind of take their foot off the gas a little bit, relax, kind of slow it down, just a slow, steady, run first game. I expect this low scoring, close game. I'll take the Bengals plus seven here, folks. I think this is the better play. Just give me the seven points and let me just kind of, all right, I got I got seven point cushion. I got a touchdown cushion. I, I think we can rock with that. Plus the Bengals are at home. Titans traveling off of a loss that they felt that they should have at least, you know, gone into overtime with. I mean, truly, I mean, missed game tying or game winning field goals. I mean, that will drain the locker room, folks. That will take all momentum, all energy out of the locker room because, you know, teams already don't like special teams, you know, in, in the first place, or people don't like special teams, fans don't like special teams, because, you know, I've seen this argument time and time again, oh, they need to take out, you know, special teams from the game, There's, they're, you know, just count a touchdown at seven, we don't need the kickoff, start at the 25, no field goal, why do we need a field goal, we'll come up with a trick kind of pass play to um, to make up for the onside kick, but I'm like, no, 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 this is, this is the game, this is football, there's offense, defense, and special teams, and really coaching, but, you know, the three main phases of the game, offense, defense and special teams leave it in there that's a huge part of the game just because somebody drafted a better kicker or found a better talented kicker than you because your ki your kicker even practicing 24 7 can't hit consistently 45 yarders to win a game or to tie a game that's your problem that's not my fault so i love special teams i think it's still a huge part of the game i don't like the slander against special teams i'm kind of only uh, i'm kind of mostly talking about uh, skip bayless i see him kind of um advocate for no special teams a lot um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. But anyway, I digress. I like the Bengals plus seven here. Home team. Um, I think the Titans are just going to slow it down this week. That's all I, I, that's truthfully what I think. I think these last couple weeks have just really been hard on the Titans. They don't have a, they don't have a bye. You can kind of see this Bengals team as talent wise, maybe as a bye week. Maybe don't try to overlook them, but don't, you know, just try to relax a little bit. So I'll take the points here. All right, let's go uh, Rams, Dolphins, two a time, baby. We did our uh, Saturday uh, profile on them yesterday. Deep dive into them. We watched film all day. It was a great time. Great time. Go watch that video. It was posted yesterday. Um, Halloween, 31st, uh, October. Perfect. Um, hour video. Hour and some change seconds. But we watched video on two all day, and it was great. And he's looking good. His accuracy is was really blowing me away. That's the one big takeaway that we saw from the film yesterday, just the accuracy on the crossing routes right on target. And we saw Trevor Lawrence in the film as well, but he was making those crossing routes, and they just didn't look as crisp, as precise as those ones that Tua did. So that is giving us a little bit more confidence here in Tua. 
First game coming off a of bye. You already know the facts, folks. We, you know, I've been saying it all week. Dolphins here. I love them plus three and a half. We see the line has come down a little bit. No half point. We just came down. So Dolphins plus three. We still like it plus three and a half at home coming off a of bye. Our defense, folks, this Dolphins defense. I mean, Truly, the Dolphins have kind of been flying under the radar, but definitely our defense has really been flying under the radar, making Ryan Fitzpatrick look good, you know, kind of canceling out his mistakes, you know, with those interceptions, keeping games close. I mean, you know, defensively, this Dolphins, t this Dolphins defense kept that Seattle game very close. It was just, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick turning the ball over, and unfortunately, you know, when your offense is turn turning the ball over, not scoring points, you're going to lose the game. So, Dolphins here, don't sleep on them. The three is a lot here, especially for a home team. I get we're making the switch to a rookie quarterback to a or from a veteran that's you know three and three. I get all of that, but I'm getting three points in the Rams offense is truly shaky, folks. You know, you can't really kind of secure it, you can't pinpoint what this offense is, you know, any given really Sunday. So I like the the Dolphins plus three. I expect Tua to kind of hang in the game. I don't think he tries to do too much here. He's he's looks like he's having fun on the sideline learning from Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, every video I see of Tua, he's just got a big smile on. On his face so you know he's ready for the game he's ready for the moment I don't think it's going to be too big for him um and I like the Dolphins plus three here Alrighty, then we got Raiders and Browns, and I see a lot of people liking the Browns, and I'm just like, why? They just lost OBJ, and Baker Mayfield is really resorting back to last year, Baker Mayfield. Not good. So, I think I like the Raiders here. Coming off of a bad loss at home when you only put up 20 and you give up 45 points, and really it wasn't even competitive. So, I like the Raiders to kind of bounce back kind of big here, kind of set the tone offensively. And this Raiders team, they just got so much speed on the offensive side and on the defensive side. That's what they're going for with the Raiders. Not the best talent, not the biggest names, but if you're fast, I can get behind you, and you've got a spot on this Raiders team, and I can get behind that philosophy. I mean, when I play Madden, when I play, you know, all those types of games, I mean, I want speed. I want fast linebackers. No, We got no time for slowness on my speed, on my team, truly. I don't care if you can tackle. I don't care if you're the uh, you're, you're the strongest. You just need to be fast because you need to get there. You need to get from the middle of the field to the sideline and chase down that wide receiver and try to break up that pass before it gets there. Um, that's why DK Metcalf is one of the best receivers in the league. He literally just hawked down a um, a, a pick six. We all saw the you know the the video from this week. We all saw that. That's why DK Metcalf is one of the best wide receivers in the league. And who are, who do I say are the top two wide receivers in the league? DK Metcalf and um, the the man from the Chiefs. Um, it's not Kareem Hunt. Um, bah, 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 wide receiver. I can't remember his name, but he's speedy. He's like not even six feet tall. Um, he always gets behind the defenders because he's so quick. So those are truly the best two wide receivers in the league because they have speed. Now the Raiders are like, all right, our wide receivers have speed. Our running back has speed. And literally everybody on our defense has big speed. This is going to confuse Baker Mayfield. He's not going to be used to the timing that to really kind of, uh, you know, perform well and kind of, you know, outpass this Raiders team because the Raiders defense is going to attack the ball and surround and gang tackle and get there quickly. I don't know if Baker Mayfield's ready for the speed of this Raiders team. I just truly don't. So, um, I think I like the Raiders here with this upset and like a little mini upset here. I think they've got the better quarterback. I'll take maybe the more experienced head coach because I do think in the grand scheme of things, even though, you know, this is Kevin Stefanski's first year, I do think he, you know, in time, he is going to be better of a coach as a play caller than uh, John Gruden is. But you know, all that being said, Baker Mayfield loses his best weapon. He already hasn't been performing very well. He's turning the ball over, and I think you know OBJ. That's going to be a huge, huge hit. That was a huge attention grabber. You know, defensively. You know, now Jarvis Landry, he becomes the number one wide receiver. Is he a true number one wide receiver? I know he's very quick, um, but that's really all he's got. Deep ball. Can he go and get it one on one? He, he's decent at it, but you know he's a you know he's a number two in my opinion. But um, I'm gonna go with the Raiders here. I think they get back on track just because they lost to the Bucks. Are we supposed to say that this Raiders team isn't good anymore? I'm not saying that. This Browns team just almost lost to the Bengals and took it literally the entire game, coming down to the last second. Baker Mayfield had to be clutch, and he was, and we celebrated that. But the fact that you know you were very close against 
the Bengals, but I think this Raiders team is better than the Bengals, so I'm going to go Raiders here, folks. I'm going to go Raiders. I, I can't I can't buy Baker Mayfield. I can't buy Baker Mayfield, and I can't buy Cam Newton. Great transition here. Um, Patriots, Bills, I, you know... <clears throat> We originally picked Patriots plus four, but I wasn't taking my own advice. I mean, I was talking for an hour on how Cam Newton just cannot get it done offensively, and now we hear uh, now we hear uh, Nikhil Harry. Where are these? Do I got it open somewhere? Maybe I don't. Um, oh, okay. I thought I had it open somewhere. I do not. But anyway, um, Nikhil Harry, their wide receiver, Julian Edelman, not playing for the Patriots. That's huge for them. Those were basically their only weapons that they had offensively, and now they don't have them. So Cam's going to even struggle more here and try to do too much here. So Patriots going on the road. Cam not looking good these last two weeks. I can't buy him anymore. I still can't even buy the Bills minus four either because it's a, a Bill Belichick-led defense for the Patriots. So I can't I mean, Bill Belichick's going to be ready for Josh Allen, folks. He's He knows Josh Allen. He's he's faced him every single time. Bill Belichick knows how to stop Josh Allen or knows what it takes to stop Josh Allen, and it will just be up to the defenders to make the plays. But I'm not even going to touch this game. I can't trust Cam Newton with the four, and I can't trust Josh Allen not to with the four points either, the four point, you know, the four point um, uh, minus four. I can't trust Josh Allen with minus four. I can't. He'll turn it over. He'll keep the game close. We thought, you know, it really should have been a blowout against the Jets last week, and he kept it close, and they were up, you know, they were up, and Josh Allen couldn't score any touchdowns against the Jets defense. The Jets defense, you can't score any points offensively, Josh Allen. Now you think you're going to be able to do something against the Patriots defense? I don't know. I, I have to stay away from this game. Maybe you go over 41. That's probably the safest bet in this entire thing. Um, the spread or the overs, I go over 41, but still I stay away from the game too close to call um, all right let's speed it up a little bit because I do want to get to the film and I also you know we have to be done before one o'clock so let's speed this up a little bit Chiefs Jets obviously this is so comical we've already talked about it it is truly funny Chiefs win big no real worries probably don't take the Chiefs minus 20 but you also can't feel comfortable with Jets plus 20 either and it, just the fact that it's plus 20 naturally is the funniest thing um funny truly <laughs> Jets are so trash. Jets are super trash. All right, Colts and Lions. I think this is going to be a good game for the Colts. I think this is going to be a game where we all kind of say, are, are the Colts a playoff team? Try to get everybody in that mindset, but don't fall for it because Phillip Rivers, he's still a clown, and he still, you know, beefs it in the big moment. So still can't buy the Colts even if they win this game, and I think they do. I love the Colts minus three. Michael Pittman Jr. is back in the lineup for the Colts. That is huge. I'm very impressed with that man, and now he's with the Colts, and he, I think he'll – be very good. Uh, so a huge weapon for uh, Philip Rivers. Uh, he's back in the lineup. Good to go. Colts coming off a bye. Detroit hasn't won a home game in a while. Detroit coming off of a, a wild win that may be having their head a little bit bigger than what it actually is. So I love the Colts here. Uh, Philip Rivers against not great talent. He's one of the best at it. He's one of the best at it. So I love the Colts here. Minus three. I think they went big. And everybody uh, come Monday be like, oh, we need to have the Colts in the top ten. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. This, this will be an isolated win, folks. We've already seen Phillip Rivers against, you know, the better teams this season against better talent. He doesn't show up at all, ever. He lost against the Browns. He lost against the Browns. Can't unforgivable, truly. So I love the Colts here, minus three. Chargers, Broncos. I already kind of talked about this one. Broncos plus three, I think, is a smarter play. Justin Herbert, mile high. I think it's going to be too much for him just because he's a rookie, just because it's his first time there. So I'm going to go with the Broncos plus three. I'll take the points. Drew Locke is looking to open it up a little bit. This Chargers team is nothing special defensively. They're decent. Um, but. Uh, the Broncos have had kind of a tough schedule these last two weeks, and it's still tough because this Chiefs or this Chargers team is better than what their record indicates, their two and five record. Um, but I love the I, I I I love the points here. I think Justin Herbert, man, he's not going to be ready for it. 
I don't think he's going to be ready for the low oxygen there. All right, Saints Bears. Once, all right, this one's climbing. This one's interesting. Wow, I did not expect this one to climb. Saints are without Emmanuel Sanders and Michael Thomas, but it's climbing to minus five now. That just speaks to how trash this Bears offense is, folks. Nick Foles is not a good quarterback. Stop it with this. Yes, he won a Super Bowl. We can all say that. I mean, um, what's his name? What's his name? The prayer guy, Florida quarterback. Uh, Tim Tebow, he won a playoff game against the Steelers. I mean, folks, t people catch magic. People catch fire. Nick Foles just caught fire. He cannot be a starting quarterback. He won you the Super Bowl. We all know the Philly special. He's got a statue in front of the Philadelphia Stadium. So that's what Nick Foles is. He's a career backup. He's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Do not let anybody fool you. He might be even worse than Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think that was disrespectful, disrespectful to Ryan Fitzpatrick to compare the two. But... Uh, Saints minus five here. Man, man, man. Obviously, I like it because I don't think the Bears can score any points in the Saints defense. I don't know what it is. They have so many individual big names, but they just don't come together all the time. So I just maybe I don't like the defensive coaching of the Saints. And who's who's calling the, the defensive play of the Saints? Can we get better on that? Um, Drew Brees spread the ball around. They made the offense work last week. Um, they didn't have a lot of incompletions, and they were moving the ball. They put up 24 points, or 27, 27 points. So it's still a decent offense for the Saints. So Drew Brees is going to be even more comfortable. I like the Saints here. I, I will still swallow the five. I still think it's a good bet. We still endorse it because Nick Foles is not going to put up any points. We know this, folks. We know this. 49ers and Seahawks, I, I don't know. A lot of people have been like calling this one kind of like a Seahawks like guaranteed win, and I'm just like, hang on, okay. I, I, I am big on the Seahawks, but this 49ers offense is really the real deal, and they've really these last two weeks have really been showing that they are the real deal. So um, I don't know. I'm not as big on the Seahawks as everybody else appears to be, I guess. I still really like the Seahawks because I think Russell Wilson is probably – uh, do I say this? He's the most consistent quarterback in the NFL? I think so. I mean, that three interception game was truly like uncharacteristic of him last week. So I expect him to clean it up a little bit. The, C the, the 49ers defense is still pretty good, even though, I mean, as a team, they're still pretty much banged up. But I like the Seahawks in this situation at home. We'll probably swallow the point and a half, but I think this one's going to be a little bit closer than a lot of people appear. To, a lot of people just appear to have this one figured out at Seahawks, and I, I just don't agree with that. Um, I, I think the Seahawks can win it, but I think the 49ers are going to put up a hell of a fight here. And then we got Cowboys Eagles. Um, that's going to transition into what we talk about with the quarterback. So we will skip this one and go to Bucks Giants tomorrow. Love the Bucks here. Giants offensively not good. Defensively not good. This Bucks defense is truly pretty good. And uh, Josh uh, Daniels is the least clutch quarterback I've ever seen. So the Giants are going to get eaten alive offensively. Tom Brady is going to be looking to make a strong case on primetime television. Aaron Rodgers is going to be making a case that's going to fuel Tom Brady even more. If Tom Brady sees that Aaron Rodgers threw four touchdowns, no picks, everybody's calling for him to be the MVP. Tom Brady's going to get the last laugh. He's going to be the last person seen. The recency bias is going to be there, folks. Monday Night Football, primetime television, Tom Brady, you know, he goes and throws five touchdowns, no interceptions, and then come Tuesday, nobody's talking about Aaron Rodgers because we just saw Tom Brady last. I really think that's how this kind of narrative for this week is going to shift. I think that's what we're all going to be talking about on Monday. We're, um, during the day, we're going to be talking about how great, great Aaron Rodgers is. He's the hands-down, unanimous MVP. And then we see Tom Brady later that night, and he's like, no, no, no. Y'all didn't see me. Y'all didn't see me yet. Watch this. Five touchdowns, no picks, 700 yards. They win by 40. I don't know. I don't know what to tell y'all. That's just how I see it going down. So Bucks minus 12 and a half, I do like. All right, all right. Let's go to the Cowboy. Back to Cowboys Eagles here, and we'll close it out. Um, but yeah, um, all right. <clears throat> Cowboys, truly trash. Offensively, defensively, worst defense in the league, worst coach in the league, second worst coach in the league. I don't think he's worse than Adam Gase. He's got a Super Bowl. We've got to give the man a little bit of credit for that, a little bit. Um, but he had Aaron Rodgers, so even less credit than we already probably would have gave you. So, Eagles here. This Eagles team probably is the best team in the NFC East. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably it. Cowboys working on their third string quarterback, and it's a doozy because he's not very good. Um, so I do like the Eagles. Well, 
let's let's hold off. Let's see. Uh, we'll watch the seven minute clip of uh, this band in college and see if we like them, and then we'll talk about the spread after that. Let's give this quarterback a fair shot, shall we? So here we go. A deep dive into the court of the Cowboys, Ben DiNucci. And you might be th- saying to yourself, why don't we just watch him, you know, last week when he was in? Eh, that's, that's no fun. I want to see his college and kind of grill him on that. Why the heck is this man even in the league? So here he goes with the stats. I mean, he was with a team in 2019. I forget what it was called. Um, James Madison, James Madison, that's where he was in 2019 and 2018 possibly, um, so he wasn't in a D1 school, that's not good, <laughs> that's not good because, you know, the, the, uh, the, the stat site that I use, uh, lists all the schools that he was in and it's not listing any James Madison, so they might not list like D3 or D2 schools, which I think James Madison is, so this is what Ben DiNucci did in Pittsburgh, he was with Pittsburgh in the ACC. That's a decent school, folks. Um, not knocking the school. Pretty good one. Um, but this is what he did in 2017. Didn't play in 2015. One game played in 2016. Looked like he came in mid-game because he only threw it nine times. And then in 2017, he played 10 games. 1,000 yards. 55 completion percentage. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Not good. Not good. Five touchdowns in 10 games. Five touchdowns and five picks. Whoa. Not good at all. Not good at all. Oh, my. That, that rating was 117? What does quarterback rating go up to? I thought it was like 120. If you're telling me that this is like a 117 quarterback rating, that's why I don't. I never look at QBR. I never look at that. Passing efficiency rating. Disgusting. I don't. I. Th- I feel like that's high. And these stats are the worst stats I've ever seen from a qu- from a quarterback averaging seven yards an attempt passing in college. In college, disgusting. Five touchdowns, five picks. Let's get in this tape now, because what I'm looking at on these stats are truly trash. There he is, number three. Um, this this is gonna go all the way. Pitts already down thirty five nothing in the second quarter. Started the second quarter. Oh my goodness, they cannot do anything offensively. And this pass was literally all the running back on this one. This is just a swing pass, five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Nothing great from Ben DiNucci there. Let's keep it going. Drop back. Blowing away, and it picked it up. But, I mean, it's third down. This is still that OK State game that we just saw. But, I mean, on that one, it was third and 10, and he throws it five yards short of the first down. That's not a great play. Yes, the running back, the running back, once again, took took matters into his own hands because he's a good playmaker. We just saw him rip it off for, like, 70 yards on the last play. He picks up the first, you know, third and five, or third and 10. He picks up five, basically, from the catch, and then he was able to run for five. So, Ben DiNucci, he's not looking good here, folks. Not looking good. First two plays all running back. All right, let's see what we see here. A nice little shovel pass. I mean, we see this big in the league now. That quick little toss back to the inside. He's running it. But once again, this isn't showing us anything really. Ben DiNucci, anybody could do that. I could possibly do that with some reps. Give me some reps and I can make the good pitch. Absolutely. Once again, oh, he's going to keep it. Oh, he's got some jukes. Okay. Okay, so now we see his jukes. Oh, that jab step killed all those, both those defenders. Well done. I'll give him that one. That was a good play. Good play, quarterback, designed run. Well done. The play fake there. And then this that jab step there, the quick, whoof, and then back out. Absolutely fantastic. I think behind that three-yard run play was the best one, and then he's back to flipping for the two-point conversion. Let's keep it going. I just want to see this man gun it out. Let's see the arm. Here we go. First real throw. Steps up in the pocket. Nice little floater. A little bit behind. A little bit behind. The the receiver had about like three steps on that defender. You can't let him just kind of hang in there waiting for the ball. So definitely got to drive it a little bit better there. Here we go. All right. Perfect pass here. Great. 40 yard. 40 yarder. Just nice flick of the wrist. Perfect placement. Wide open. Well done. Best throw that we've seen Danucci make so far in this little highlight package. Well done. Yes, sir. Talk your shit a little bit. Get get excited. You just threw a touchdown. Absolutely. Nice double move there. Recognize the opening. Delivered a beautiful ball. You love to see it. All right. Here we go again. Nice little out route. Those are tough to make because, you know, you're basically throwing it, you know, the entire half width of the field. That's pretty much the farthest throw you can make, you know, from sideline to sideline. So, well done there. Didn't get picked. Didn't get broken up. Got there. And it got there. All right. Stumbling out. 
keeps focus. This was a designed kind of toss back to the left here to a lineman. So this isn't anything special. This was designed. But he was able to kind of keep his composure. It kind of got blown up right from the rip. He was tripping. And then he was able to still get the ball off. So I commend him for that. We see him trip out of the, out of the break there. But he was still able to kind of, you know, know what the play is just don't get don't get jumbled um and just keep you know, keep your mind on the play so well done what do we got here a step up oh boy he's gonna show off the legs okay nothing nothing special but that was 34 and then he threw up the first down sign you love to see it um all right once again throwing out to the flat nothing uh nothing great there so we'll keep it keep it moving here we go. Ben DiNucci. Let's see. I mean, we're seeing nothing big from this man. We're seeing a lot of dink and dunk. I want to see him air it out, really. We saw the one play that was good. 40 yarder. So that's that's what we know this man's arm strength is so far. About 40 yards. Haven't seen anything more than that. So we got to judge him on 40. Oh, this is a great ball. Rolling out to your left. Absolutely fantastic. Got about, you know, 20 yards on that play. Absolutely great. Well done. Rolling out. Out of the pocket, fantastic, places it right on the money. Love to see it. All right. All right, finds the open receiver. Receiver does his thing. About 15 on the ground. Ooh, okay, we might get a bomb alert, bomb alert here, folks. Down the sideline, one-on-one matchup. That's a beautiful ball. That's a beautiful ball. Well done. Got it over the defender. Receiver was looking for the ball. And even if the defender looked back, oh, we're going to get a, a replay of this. Fantastic. It's like the video's reading my mind right now. You'll have to see it. So well done. I think he was able to get this ball enough over the defender where if he does kind of turn around last second, he can't make the play. Is this three straight replays of the same one? I mean, wow, wow, wow. He's best throw, one of his best throws of the game. And they go and highlight that three times. I mean, they know that that was his best throw, folks. I'm not talking anything, you know, that's not real. I mean, they. They just, you know, whoever made this clip made this uh, same highlight three times. But here we go. Continuing on. Let's see the arm, baby. Come on. Let's see it. Oh, this is in James Madison. So this is even more. So this is NCAA FCS championship. So this is an FBS FCS. Honestly, I don't know the difference. I know that it's not as good as FBS. I know it's a, a lesser tier college football. I, that's what I know. I know it's like sub. It's sub uh, college football NCAA D1 schools. So here he is. He has to downgrade because he's not getting it done in Pittsburgh in the FBS. So he has to go down to the FCS. Not great. Not what you want to see from your starting quarterback come Sunday. I could tell you that. But here he is. Is he having a little bit more success? It looks like he's having a little bit more swagger. Is this him? Is that him? D Danucci? Number six here? That's got to be him. Steps up in the pocket. He's feeling a lot more comfortable in the pocket here. I can just look at him. He looks like he wants to move around in the pocket more too as well. So that's better. Maybe he's getting better. He's learning. He had to go down, you know, do a worse school. But, hey, he's learning. Um, and then they make the – is this a game-winning pass? I see a lot of confetti flying. This was at halftime, and they were already leading. This James Madison is celebrating a little too hard here. <laughs> I guess it is, the, you know, the FCS, so the national championship game for theirs. So I guess we got to give this man a little bit more credit. Oh, was that first round? Hang on, let me go back. Let's say, oh, this said semifinal. All right. So that wasn't even the final. Now we get second round, so this is the game before that. Um, let's go back here. Just once again, kind of that out route. We've seen it when he was in Pittsburgh in the highlights. This is just all wide receiver. I love that they put these in highlight packages. It's like, oh, yeah, it led to the touchdown. But, I mean, truthfully, you, you deliver the ball like five yards to the left. Nothing great. Um, great play design. I'll, I'll give more credit to the coach of coming up with the play there than the quarterback of executing it, you know, okayly i mean if you're throwing it 20 yards downfield then i'll give the quarterback some credit but i mean if you're just throwing it five yards to the left and then the quarterback go or the run or the wide receiver goes uh for 40 for the touchdown i'm not giving quarterback too much credit for that uh but here he is here he wants to show off his legs he's obviously wants to run we've seen him try to do it in this read option d and does not contain at all and he just goes literally walks he could have crawled in to the end zone once again, I mean, he the, he wants to run in the end zone, folks. Watch out. I mean, if you're the Eagles, Doug Peterson, I hope you are watching this film because this man wants to run. He want, You know, in the red zone, he, he, he's got no problem taking it himself here. All right, here we go. Let's try to finish this up a little bit quickly. We've got about 40 seconds left on it. We'll let it play. 
Nice little slant over the middle. It got there. I mean, but that's all we're seeing. We're seeing nothing big from this man. Rolling out to the right. He wants to run, folks. Look at this pop he just took on fourth and six. I love the heart here. He knows he's got to pick it up, and he does. What a fighter. Okay. Okay, I can get behind this man now. Ben DiNucci, y'all. Watch out for this man. He's a physical powerhouse. They were down 13-28 when this happened in the fourth quarter. This man's looking for a comeback. Nice little slant there. They get the touchdown. Eight-point game in the fourth quarter. Seven minutes left. Oh, no. How they? All right, we got to figure out that game. What the heck happened at the end of that game? I'm assuming they lost because there wasn't another highlight there. But I have to see. Oh, this is the national championship. James Madison, North Dakota State. FCS national champ. I got to know how that game ended, folks. I got to know. Okay. Did I say North Dakota State, South Dakota State? North Dakota State. All right, let's see if we find this. <laughs> I, I want to do make this very quickly. Uh, North Dakota State beat James Madison 28-20. Damn it. No, Ben DiNucci. Darn you. Darn you. How unfortunate. Ben DiNucci looking good there, coming back, makes it a one-point one score game but what happened i need to know what happened in the fourth quarter did ben DiNucci get the ball back i mean what is going on here in this in this game oh man north dakota state had a chance to essentially put the game away on an ensuing di dive but the duke stopped the bison with fourth and two and took control of the ball on their own 37 with 240 ben DiNucci, you're on your own 37 and you have three minutes left and you can't go down james madison got the ball all the way down to the three-yard line, but DiNucci was intercepted. No! Ben DiNucci. Cowboys fans, this is what you've got to look forward to this Sunday. Ben DiNucci's looking good. Game-winning drive, and he throws a pick at the, at the end zone. Darn it, Ben DiNucci. He's not clutch. Damn it. All right, we take Eagles minus 10.5 because of that. There it is. Eagles minus 10. That's a lock. Ben DiNucci, he's not clutch, folks. We just saw it in a championship game. If he can't do it in a championship game, do you think he's going to be doing it in a division game week eight? No. Ben DiNucci, trash, unclutch. They lose. Eagles, oh, I can't wait for Sunday Night Football now, folks. To watch Ben, DiNu ben DiNucci live after watching that, I'm all set. Um, all right, we are nine minutes out from kickoff. We're going to get going. Eight minutes out from kickoff. We are definitely going to get going. Watching Tua, watching the Steelers, some great action. We're going to watch Aaron Rodgers aired out. Then we get Tom Brady on Monday. Then we get Ben DiNucci, unclutchness on Sunday Night Football. Folks, the schedule's here. It's going to be a great one. Um, we'll be back um, on Monday. We'll break down all the action. Can Ben DiNucci pull it out? I don't think so, but if he does, we'll be celebrating him tomorrow live, noon Eastern, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. We're breaking down the all the action from tonight. I cannot wait. Eight minutes out. I'm so excited. We've got to go, folks. I got to get some pregame on. I got to watch something. We'll see you tomorrow, noon Eastern, uh, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. Takes by fans.